The 19th century geologist Charles Lyell was also a lawyer. And Lyell is famous for making status quo among scientists and many of today's Christian denominations the idea that the world's geology reflects an age of the earth much older than the 6,000 years reflected by the Bible. It is a fact that this proposition enabled and greatly influenced Charles Darwin's evolutionary ideas. But was Charles Lyell really approaching geology and the Earth's age from a plainly scientific and objective perspective? No, not at all. And we have the historical, documented proof of it. In his private correspondence, Lyell admitted to the strongly anti-biblical nature of his ideas. Historical documentation reveals that Charles Lyell had a clear agenda to, quote, free the science from Moses. Regardless of the real science of the matter, this is where Charles Lyell was going to take his ideas. Interestingly, he was also deeply concerned, while he attacked Christianity, not to attack Islam. Gee, not much has changed since the 1880s. Lyell wrote about his agenda on the 14th of June in 1830 in a letter to George Poulet Scrope. Listen to these excerpts from that letter. Charles Lyell writes, I am sure you may get into quarterly review what will free the science from Moses. For, if treated seriously, the church party are quite prepared for it. They see at last the mischief and scandal brought on them by Mosaic systems. I was afraid to point the moral as much as you can do in the quarterly review about Moses. Perhaps I should have been tenderer about the Koran. Don't meddle much with that, if at all. And if we don't irritate, and he meant the Christian church, we shall carry all with us. If you don't triumph over them, but compliment the liberality and candor of the present age, the bishops and the enlightened saints will join us in despising both the ancient and modern theologians. It appears quite apparent that Lyle, father of the modern lie of the ancient age of the earth, was involved not in scientific investigation but political manipulation techniques to ensure his unbiblical ideas would ultimately be accepted by the church, clearly by psychological trickery, even though he knew his declarations contradicted the plain teaching of Scripture. Lyle's demonically inspired scheming not only tricked the church into accepting his falsehoods, thus undermining the clear gospel message of Jesus Christ, but Lyle also took geology down a path of pseudoscience for over a hundred years, as some geologists now recognize. Listen to the words of Warren Allman, director of the Paleontological Research Institute in Ithaca, New York, and adjunct associate professor of Earth and Atmospheric Sciences at Cornell University. He wrote this in 1993. Quote, Lyle also sold geology some snake oil. He convinced geologists that all past processes acted at essentially their current rates. This extreme gradualism has led to numerous unfortunate consequences, including the rejection of sudden or catastrophic events in the face of positive evidence for them, for no reason other than that they were not gradual. Yes, Lyle bragged about being able to eventually carry away the church into his deception. Sadly, he was able to do that very thing with a large segment of Christianity. From the beginning, evolution was conceived in purposed deception by the admission of its own founding fathers.